variation starts with an alkene, then it is an addition reaction. And then if it ends with an alkene, it is an elimination reaction. And if the first condition or the second conditions are not met, then it is a substitution reaction. So this is how you can easily identify the type of a reaction by just looking at the compound it starts with or the product that you have. If it starts with an alkene, it is an addition reaction. If it ends with an alkene, it is an elimination reaction. And if either of those are not true, it is a substitution reaction. So let's see how we can use this to answer this question. So 4.1.1, identify the type of reaction represented by B. So take a look at reaction B. Does it start with an alkene? No, it does not. It starts with an alcohol. So it cannot be an addition reaction. Does it end with an alkene? Yes, it does. As soon as we see that, we know that it is an elimination reaction because it ends with an alkene. Right. Those are the only two things we need to look at. If it didn't end with an alkene, then it would be a substitution reaction. That is 4.1.1. Let's take a look at 4.1.2. Identify the type of reaction represented by D. So again, does it start with an alkene? No, it does not. Bromoethane is not an alkene. And does it end with an alkene? It is not. It ends with an alcohol. So because the first condition is not met and the second condition is also not met, then we are saying that it would be a substitution reaction. Now, those are the only two things that we need to look at. Does it start with an alkene? Does it end with an alkene? If that's not the case, then it is a substitution reaction. So there we go. That is 4.1. Let's take a look at 4.2. 4.2, we're supposed to write down two reaction conditions for reaction B. So reaction B, it's easy to see that we have an elimination reaction. So heat is a reaction condition for all elimination reactions. Heat is a reaction condition for all elimination reactions. Right, so heat is our first answer, right? As soon as we see a reaction condition, and it is elimination, heat we gotta think after that. So now let's find another reaction condition. So what is happening? What is happening here? We have dehydration, right? We have an alcohol turning to an alkene. So we need a dehydrating agent of which we can use a catalyst such as H2SO4. So we also need a catalyst as a reaction condition for this elimination elimination reaction that we have. 4.2, let's take a look at 4.3 and 4.3.1. For reaction A, write down the name of the inorganic reactant. So reaction A, we are turning an alkene into an alcohol. Obviously, we need H2O to turn an alkene into an alcohol. And by our definition, H2O is inorganic because it does not contain carbon. So name of the inorganic reactant it is water, right? Not H2O. The question is very specific. We are looking for the name of the inorganic reactant. And then 4.3.2, chemical formula of the catalyst used. Chemical formula, not the name, right? So don't confuse the two. Well, you know what they mean. Just be careful and not write a formula when they want a name or write a name when they're looking for a formula. So here the chemical formula of a catalyst needed, we need H2SO4, right? H2SO4 is not always the answer to an uh, equation with regards to catalyst, right? It just happens that uh, we have used it twice in this equation. Okay, 4.4, 4.4.1. Let's take a look. For reaction C, okay, so reaction C, we are turning in an alkene, to a hollow alkane, right? And then 4.4.1, use structural formula and write down a balance equation. Okay, we're supposed to use structural formula. So this is our alkene with two carbons. How many bonds do we have? One, two, three. So we need another, 
hydrogen. And we can see that our product is bromoethane. So what are we adding here? We add in HBr. And this should give us bromoethane. So the double bond gets broken. And it's just a matter of filling out the hydrogen and the bromo in one of those bonds. So there we go. I don't think uh, there's any wrongdoing uh, that we do in there. I think all is well. Right. Quite an easy uh, reaction. Uh, we have our alkene. We add a hydrogen and a halogen. So it is a hydrohalogenation addition reaction. And then this is our product. Okay, there we go, 4.4.1. Let's take a look at 4.4.2. So 4.4.2, explain why no water should be present during this reaction. Explain why no water should be present during this reaction. We are avoiding the formation of OH instead, right? If you have water, it's very possible that instead of having Br there, you might have OH. So that is what we are running from. Yes, we are trying to avoid uh, the formation of the hydroxyl group, right? That is 4.4.2. 4.5, let's go ahead and take a look. So we are now concentrating on reaction E. Okay, let's see what the first question says. Type of reaction. Okay, so reaction E represents the conversion of the alcohol into organic compound X. So reaction E, okay. So we start with an alcohol, as we can clearly see, and then we add what looks like an acid to get compound X. So something should be, something should come to mind when we talk about alcohol plus acid. This is clearly a starification. So the answer to 4.5.1 is a starification. An alcohol plus an acid in the presence of a, a suitable catalyst will give you a starification, right? It will give you an ester. So type of reaction, a starification, right? So a starification. There we go. That is 4.5.1. Let's take a look at 4.5.2. Chemical formula of the catalyst used, we know what suitable catalyst we need in a starification. We need concentrated H2SO4. That's what we use in our esterification reactions. And then 4.5.3, structural formula of compound X. Compound X, I would assume, is the product formed. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, there we go. So our alcohol has two carbons. One, two, okay. That's easy to see. And then our acid, let's go ahead and find out. We have one, two, five, right? That C multiplied by three there. So we have one, two from the alcohol. And then we still have our oxygen from the alcohol. And then as soon as, as long as, as it comes, and the carboxylic acid, we still have our double bond oxygen. And then one, two, three, four. So in total, one, two, three, four, five. We have our five carbons from the carboxylic acid. So now, uh, what we just need to do is to fill out the hydrogens everywhere else. I hope we're looking for the structure of the product and not um, the entire reaction, right? So there we go. Um, yes, maybe we should just do the reaction. Uh, the entire reaction so that you can see where it is coming from right maybe we should do the entire thing so that you can see where it is coming from but this is the answer this is uh, our product this is compound x right uh, let me show you what it, where it is coming from either way Le let me show you where it is coming from so we're saying that our alcohol has two carbons yes so it means that we have one two oh H, hydrogen, hydrogen, everywhere else. Okay, this is what we have. Plus the carboxylic acid. Our carboxylic acid has five carbons. So it is one, two, three, four, five. 
well let me put these a little bit to the right so that uh, it will be easy to see when we remove our h2o so that it can be easy to see when we remove our h2o so hydrogen everywhere else hydrogen everywhere else okay okay there we go so what happens is that the alcohol loses the hydrogen and the acid loses the oh okay and then that is why a byproduct or an inorganic product of esterification is h2o right so we essentially lose in this we lose this we lose this part because uh, water is removed from well we get water when we add the two the two compounds so that is why our product ends up looking like this this is why our product ends up looking like that okay so there we go i, I hope you can see where it is coming from right the alcohol loses a hydrogen and the carboxylic acid loses an oh but anyway stories uh, let's take a look at the question that follows is it four 4.5.4 uh, i think so we're looking for the iupac name of the compound so how do we name an ester right well we started with um the alcohol and then we finished off with uh, the acid so the alcohol here is ethanol as it has two carbons so we're gonna have ethyl and then the carboxylic acid is pentanoic acid as we have five carbons so we're gonna have pentanoid so the name of this ester is ethyl pentanoid right if the alcohol had three carbons it would be propyl pentanoid if the carboxylic acid had four carbons for instance it would be ethyl butanoid that is how it works first part of the name comes from the alcohol how many carbons we have and the second part of the names come the second part of the name comes from uh, the acid how many carbons we have that is 4.5 4.6 let's go ahead and take a look so 4.6 uh, reaction f takes place in the presence of warm concentrated sodium hydroxide use condensed uh, use condensed structural formula and write down a balance equation for this reaction let's go ahead and take a look at reaction f so reaction f bromoethane uh, or to give us an alkene okay so let's take a look there in the presence of concentrated naoh so in the presence of concentrated naoh that's where elimination is going to take place if it was in the presence of dilute naoh then substitution would take place so let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, we start off with our bromoethane okay so pr hydrogens everywhere else okay this is what we started with and then plus n a o h okay so what happens here is that well we are supposed to use condensed structural formula not the way i'm doing it here but let me just carry on with this for the sake of clarity after doing this then we're gonna write it in the correct form we're gonna use condensed structural formula okay so let's just carry on with this for the time being so what happens here is that na will bond with br and then oh will bond with the hydrogen removed right and then it means that our product well our byproducts we're gonna have nabr plus h2o okay that's how it goes so let me show you uh, it means here that the products we're gonna have one double bond because now it is an alkene hydrogens elsewhere plus n a b r plus h two o this is how the reaction takes place in terms of the structural formula 
But our equation, we're supposed to use condensed structural formula. So let's go ahead and do that. This is just for the sake of clarity. So condensed structural formula, CH3, CH2Br, okay, plus NaOH. And what does this give us? This gives us CH2, CH2. As you can clearly see, CH2, CH2, and then plus NaBr plus N, oh, not NaOH, but H2O, right? We have H2O there. So there we go. That is uh, the condensed structural formula for reaction F. Okay, so 4.7, crack in, crack in. Let's take a look. Um, we know fully well that this is still part of our syllabus, uh, but it's one of those questions that they're not usually there in the exam. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. A large straight chain alkenes can be catalytically cracked to produce shorter chain alkenes and branched alkanes, which are more suitable for use in petrol. The reaction below indicates the catalytic cracking of octane. Okay, so octane, obviously, we are expecting eight carbons. And then here on the alkene, we have two carbons. It means that on compound Y, which will be an alkene, we should have six carbons. So C6H14. That's what we expect compound Y to be. All right. So what does the equation say? Write down the IUPAC name of compound Y. So 66, that is hex. So this is hexane. 4.7.1 is hexane. So there we go, hexane. And then uh, 4.7.2, briefly explain why shorter chain alkenes and branched alkenes are more suitable for use in petrol than larger straight chain alkenes. So what do you think is the answer to this question? You know, explain why shorter chain alkenes and branched alkenes are more suitable for use in petrol than larger straight chain alkenes. Right, maybe just to give you a hint, think about intermolecular forces, energy required, so on and so on. Let me know in the comments what your answer to this question is.